Welcome to the Oxylabs web scraping tutorial. We'll be guiding you through building a simple and efficient web scraper with Python. This tutorial is intended for beginners, thus no prior coding experience will be needed. After completing this tutorial, you will be able to create your very own web scraper, acquire data from websites, and store it into CSV files. Our first step is to, well, download Python itself. Our good friend Google is here to help with that. When we arrive at the dedicated Python download page, it should detect your OS by default. In our case, that is Windows. Let's download the latest version. Our second step is to find a coding environment. PyCharm's Community Edition works great, and it's also free. Back to Google yet again, and select the free community version. We won't be needing anything more advanced than this. Installing these is quite simple, so we'll skip straight to the coding part. Once you open up PyCharm, you'll be greeted with a project menu. Let's create a new project. Call it Web Scraping Project and click Create. A rather long loading screen will pop up. Wait for PyCharm to do its work. Note that the approach shown in this tutorial is just one of many ways to perform web scraping. There's plenty of room for other, more creative methods. Once the environment is ready, there's a few things to do. First, if needed, click Fix on the notification at the bottom right. Select Configure Automatically and, depending on your OS, allow the changes to be done. Next, let's create a Python file by using the menu at the top left. Open up the folders and right-click, select New, and Python file. Let's call it Web Scraper. Time to get some libraries that we'll be using in this tutorial. Let's open up the terminal at the bottom. Type in pip install beautiful soup for pandas selenium. After pressing enter, we'll have to wait a little bit until Python finishes installing the libraries. We should clean up a little. Let's close the terminal as we won't be needing it anymore and minimize the project menu. We won't be needing that for quite a bit. Now it's coding time. We should begin by importing the libraries we just installed. Type in import pandas as pd. From bs4 import beautiful soup. From selenium import webdriver. Each in a new line. Time to define our first variable driver. It'll be the variable that states what our web driver or browser is and where it's located. Web drivers are based on browsers that are installed in the system. I use Chrome, so our web driver will be Chrome. Unfortunately, we can't run our regular browser. We have to find a specific web driver. We do this by going back to Google and looking up your preferred browser and web driver. Note that the versions of the web driver and the web browser must match, otherwise our scraper will be unable to run. We can find our version of Chrome by clicking on the menu, going to Help and the About section. Download the web driver version that matches your browser. If none do, update your browser. Now extract the downloaded file. After that's done, we might as well delete the archive. Time to copy our path and input it into PyCharm. Note that the backslashes should be flipped for Python and that the path should be inside single or double quotes. At the end of the path, we should input the exact file name. PyCharm will automatically show the possible executables in the path, making it much easier to find the required files. Our next statement is driver.get. This is the URL where our address will go. For this tutorial, we shall use the Oxylabs blog. Let's run the application now to check if we made any mistakes. If you receive any errors, PyCharm will generally pinpoint the mistake with a line and arrow. So far, so good. Time to move on. Let's create a list object in which we will store our scraped results. The square brackets indicate that it's an empty list. Naming the variable results will do just fine. Now we need to get the page source. Our variable content 
will store the page source derived from the URL we visited with the expression driver.page underscore source. Finally, since the source code would be a large mess without parsing, we create a new variable soup and use beautiful soup and add content into it. So far, our code will go to our selected URL with a browser, get its page source, and store it in an easily readable format. We begin the tricky part now. We need to extract the data from the parsed source and place it into our list. Let's begin by creating a for loop. Use for element in soup.findAll. Open regular brackets, type in attrs equals, and quotes, and add a colon at the end. Our loop will iterate over all elements in the parsed source file that match specific attributes. Time to find the attributes. Let's go back to our selected page, the Oxylabs blog. Let's say we want to find all the blog post titles. Right-click on any post title and select Inspect. We should see where our data is nested. We need to find the closest parent class name. In our case, that would be blog-card underscore content dash wrapper. Note that there might be other tags along the way and our title is right before. Let's copy that and paste it in between the quotes in PyCharm. Our loop will now go through all elements whose class attribute contains the string blog-card underscore content dash wrapper. Time to create more variables and get the data we need. Let's name our variable name and add another find method, element.find. Each element matching the above attributes will execute a find method. Now we need to tell our code what it should find. Let's go back to our DevTools window. Note that we are no longer looking for attributes, but tags themselves. We find the tag where our blog post titles are stored, which is h2. Now our loop will go through each element whose class matches blog-card underscore content dash wrapper and store the entire h2 tag found within it into the variable name. We will now create an if statement that will avoid adding duplicates to our list if name not in results. Pretty self-explanatory. Don't forget the colon at the end. Time to add our data to the list we called results. Results.append name.text will add the data stored in the variable name to the end of the list object results. The method text after name adds only the text stored within the h2 class found. As our loop goes from start to finish, it'll keep adding the titles to our list. We can test it out. Let's remove the indentation and print out our list by using print results. Now let's run our code and see the output. We can ignore the parser error as it defaults to HTML. As we can see at the bottom, all the current blog post titles are listed. Not very useful as of yet, but we know our code works. Nice. There's one thing that might be irking you. Our Selenium browser never closes. Let's go back up and force it to close after it parses the source code through. .driver.quit will force the browser to close. Now let's try running it again. Great. Let's move on to more useful outputs. Might as well remove our print statement as we'll be using our pandas library to export data into CSV files. First, we need to create a variable that would create a two-dimensional table. Our pd.dataframe expression will do just that. In the parentheses, we create a dictionary by adding curly brackets. Then we define our headers, or column names, and the values as list of items. Now we export our newly created table by using the method dot two underscore CSV and we add a few arguments to the brackets. First, we name our file with the intended extension. Then we set our index to false and finally our encoding to UTF-8. Our first web scraper is done. Time to run it. If the process ends with the exit code zero, it means everything is finished as intended. Time to open our output file. 
Let's go to the top left corner, open the project menu, right click our CSV file, show in File Explorer and open it up. Our data is listed in a file under the column Names. But scraping just one set of data is generally not enough. Let's try something a little more complex by getting two sets of data and matching them. We'll need a new list which we can name other underscore results for now. For simplicity, let's create a copy of our first loop and fix it up a little. We'll need to replace our find methods as we'll be looking for different data. Let's match the date with the titles. Our data will be nested within the element with the class blog-card underscore date-wrapper and the p tag. Time to fix up our loops for clarity. Let's replace the find method with p, change the element to a and b, respectively. Then, in the copied loop, replace name with date everywhere and change the append to other underscore results instead of results. Since we are no longer using element, let's replace it with a and b where needed. Finally, in the find all method, let's replace content with date. Our second loop is finished. In order to export the data, we need to simply add our new list to the data frame arguments. Let's name it dates and add other underscore results as the source. Time to run our code again. We can repeat the steps as before to check our newly created file. Open the project menu and use show in file explorer. That wraps it up. You can improve upon your web scraper in many ways. We have many other suggestions and some different approaches in our blog. Check out the description for our web scraping tutorials.